All right, today, guys, we're stepping into the ring with the Ineos Grenadier, the new contender in the four-wheel drive world. Is this thing going to be the next king of off-road? Let's have a look at it. That way you can decide. There's three models available. The Grenadier, the Grenadier Trial Master, and the Grenadier Field Master. We're in the Trial Master today, which comes with a three liter B57 twin turbo inline six diesel, but they also come in a petrol variant too. This bad boy cranks out 183 kilowatts of power and 550 Newton meters of torque. Mated to this engine is an eight speed automatic transmission paired with full time four wheel drive. You've got a ladder frame chassis with coil springs and live axles. That's perfect for tackling tough terrain. And with the center differential lock and both high and low range options, this rig is ready for anything you throw at it. All right, so interior wise, you have everything that you need at your fingertips. It's very still rugged, but luxurious in the same sense of the word. What do I mean by that? Steering wheel, leather wrapped, very cool. It's got steering wheel controls on it. Things like your cruise control and your Bluetooth, stuff like that is all there at your fingertips. So whilst you're driving, you've got access to that easily. Buttons, buttons and switches. Like, look at this dash. You've got a button for pretty much everything that you need. And then in this particular model, you've got all your roof console uh, accessories as well. So things like your off-roading modes, lights, and then these ones back here, it's very cockpit-like in the switching, but it's already there. So if you are a little bit like myself and you want accessories like this particular vehicle has, things like roof lighting, bar lighting, it's all here, ready to rock and roll. So that is very, very cool. They've kind of done it in a way where it is simple, yet you've got all your niceties that other vehicles don't come with. Things like seated, seated heats, heated seating. You've got everything here and you've got this fancy little doodad in the middle here for your infotainment system as well. So it kind of looks complicated when you look at it, but the simplicity of it all of one push of a button and away you go. I really like that. If you haven't noticed seating in these, look at that, Recaro. So they have very fancy seats. I do like them. The driver's seat is very, very comfortable. So that's something very, very cool about these vehicles. All right, in this particular model, like I keep saying, there's three different versions. This one has a dual battery system from factory. So as it comes, you've got your start battery there. You've got access to all your fusing. Look at that. That is something that I'm a massive fan of. It's the last thing you want. Something doesn't work and you can't even get to a fuse box. So pop the seat up, there you go. But in this particular one, you're getting a whole dual battery system ready to rock and roll. So if you are like myself and you want to run a fridge or whatever you want to, boom, it's right there. Features that I do like about this thing, exterior wise, obviously, because I'm standing outside the vehicle, they all come with this front bar, right? But you have options. So when you order one of these vehicles, you can pretty much go onto the website and click, tick and flick things that you do want, things that you don't want. So something that it is cool about the Grenadier is you can get it with the hoops, you can get it without the hoops, you can option a winch in the front of it, and it actually has wiring in there already to run a winch on the front of this vehicle. That's kind of something that no one else is doing. No other four wheel drive manufacturer is creating a vehicle that you don't have to pull the front bumper off and then put a bar on. These guys are kind of already doing it in a manner that, of course you could get a new bar built for it. Not saying that that won't happen, uh, but directly from the factory, you can opt for something like this or a hoopless bar type look or a winch. So pretty cool feature. Number two, the headlights. I do like the little DRL ring that they have in here. LED headlights, high low beam, they are actually quite good. Um, I wouldn't say they're the best thing since sliced bread, but definitely better than some other candles that everyone kind of knows what cars they were in. So let's go up and have a look what's underneath this thing because there are a couple of features I want to show you. So let's check it out. 
All right, so talk about a four-wheel drive that was made by a four-wheel driver for four-wheel drivers, if you want to kind of say it that way. What are we looking at underneath? There's a five-link system in the rear and in the front. So you've got uppers, lowers, pan art at the rear, sway bar here at the back, obviously. Um, but it's very, very similar at the front as well. Live axle diff, front diff, rear diff. Cool thing about these is they're actually manufactured by a tractor company that does diff housings as well. So you would think it's going to stand the test of time uh, coming from a factory like that. But guess what else is in here? Coils, coils in the rear. So if you are one of those people that is a little bit concerned about not having your ride too rough, uh, this is definitely the way to go on something like this. I reckon as time progresses and people get their hands on these things a little more often, you'll see all of this suspension stuff change because uh, that's what we love to do. We love to modify. So that is something that I am keen to see what's going to happen in the future with these. Pretty, pretty excited about that. Here's something else I noticed while I was under here. There's your front guard, diff, cross member. Look how high the engine and the gearbox sits. Like, I don't know if you would even consider about trying to put a bash plate or anything here because it is so much higher than most other manufacturers are doing. Like. It is, there's just so much space here compared to other vehicles. So that's something that's pretty darn cool, especially if you're going to be doing some uh, interesting wheeling. So we've had a bit of a look around it, but what does it drive like? Let's go and find out. Yeah, cluster in the middle. Weird, but not the end of the world. I mean, it's right there. Not hard to just go, hey, I'm doing 60K an hour or I'm not. However, there is a display here in front of you that is everything else. So all your hazard lights, engine lights, uh, even when you turn your headlights on, that all comes up in here saying what the car is doing. So our indicator comes up in this display. This seating position, I like that. That's quite comfortable for me. I don't mind that being like that. It's not like it's out of place or feels weird. Yeah, it might get a little bit cramped because you can't stretch your leg out. You've got a nice little uh, bike rider toot toot horn. And then you get your wheel horn. Tell your bike rider to, hey mate, I'm just about to run you over, so if you want, wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind just getting out of the way, whereas the other ones just, oh mate, f off out the way, if you know what I mean. The windows are very square. However, check this out. Ah, oh, look at that armrest already built in. So I really like that. So even when you got a can of cola, you could just even rest it there. Don't even have to get aftermarket one. I mean, I wouldn't mind building a little cup holder here. You could just clip it over that and just go thump. Steering is very live axle steering. I suppose I'm very, very used to it. Don't mind it at all. Um, yeah, it's automatic, drives nice. It's quite, it's quite quiet in here and it's actually pretty darn comfy. Like these coils are obviously a lighter weighted coil. Uh, which I don't mind. Well, first impressions, it drives really well. I am very happy with that. The box is pretty awesome. Just the way it all around feels whilst you're driving it, feels comfortable, sturdy on the road, so happy about that. But here's some things that surprised me about this car. First things first, GVM. Super surprised about the GVM on this. 3550 and GCM of seven ton. That's putting this thing in contending with 70 series Land Cruiser and your Y62s as well. Another thing that did surprise me about the Ineos Grenadier is the options with your diff lockers. So every single version of the car comes with a center diff lock. 
then you can opt for, like this one has, front and rear diff lockers from factory. So if you are a avid four-wheel driver like myself, there's definitely something that is pretty cool option with this vehicle. Third thing that surprised me about this particular model of the Grenadier is under the floor mat, not just this thing, but the floor itself, you can remove it and there is a bung in the floor that you can then remove to hose out the internal of your off-road and four-wheel drive vehicle. Like how good's that? So if you didn't know, Ignition Car Centre is HQ for Ineos in Brisbane. So while we're here, let's go have a chat to the experts, and see what they have to say about this vehicle. All right, as promised guys, we're here with one of the directors of Ignition Car Centre. This is Anthony. Anthony, why Ineos? Uh, well, good question, Brent. We, uh, we've been BMW dealers for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, as you're well aware, we've got a BMW power plant in the, uh, in the Ineos Grenadier. Indeed. And when we heard that and being an avid four-wheel driver, put the two together, I felt like I was back home. So, mate, we took the Trial Master for a bit of a drive yep. today. Can you just run me through the models that are available? Yeah, definitely. We've got, uh, well, we've got the wagon and the quartermaster. Obviously the quartermaster is our ute version. Yep. Our wagon came first, 12 months ago, the first car came. Comes in a base model, a trial master and a field master. Right. We now have the quartermaster. That's now coming in, by, or in the same variants, a base, a trial and a field master as well. The one you drove today was a trial master, mm. was originally a quartermaster with a tub. And you can see we've taken the tub off. We've put the Norwell tray on. It's the first one in the country. And it looks pretty good, if you ask it, me. It looks very good. And it looks quite similar to something else that uh, people might be familiar with. We could see that there was a little bit of a, how would I put it? Probably an identity, identity crisis coming from the legend. And, mm. the, and I don't need to mention the legend today, but it's been around for some time. Yep, yep. It's been a great car. We've all owned a few of them, but it's now gone what's what's there what's there in that heavy axle market to replace it and we think this thing i think it'll go pretty well everyone knows a 70 series is built tough it's rugged what kind of warranty is Ineos backing up with their vehicles? Yeah, oh, uh, Ineos come with quite a good warranty. They come with a uh, five-year warranty, yeah. which is which is awesome. A lot of, and the great thing about the Ineos as well, all European stuff in there. We've got our Brembo brakes, we've got our Eibach springs, we've yep. got our Bilstein shocks, yep. our Recaro seats, the BMW engine, of course. These are all names that are very, very familiar to everyone who would be in our four-wheel drive industry and should already. Be. Yep because Bilstein's definitely something that we use. Recaro seats are definitely something that we put into said vehicle that uh, everyone knows and loves. So I don't think this would be too far from what people are already familiar with by the sound of it. Yeah, true. And I think also a great platform to start with. Mm. I mean, someone like yourself gets involved. You've got a great basis. You've already got the braking system there, the suspension systems there, whether you tweak them a little bit, lift them yeah. and do what you do. And that's, of course. that's your gig, Brent. Of course. Uh, we're the dealer. Uh, so yeah, look, I think it's a great platform for someone like yourself to get involved and start to build these up and, and build a new legend, Indeed. so to speak. So following up from warranties, things like that, yep. uh, how are you guys going for parts, spares, all that type of thing? Have you guys had any challenges and what kind of solutions have you put um, in place? Yeah, look, Enios have been really supportive in yep. that space. Uh, we've got a local warehouse in Melbourne, so we've got a facility in the country. Beautiful. Uh, that stock is increasing daily, of course. Yep. Uh, but it, look, if there's something that we need and what we've seen, if we need something out of, out of Europe, it's here. They'll air freight it out. I think the big question comes is, and every question, every customer asks the same, what happens when I'm out? Yeah. You're in the city, Ant. Yeah. What about the other dealers? What's happening out in the, in the outer fringes, in the outback? And yeah. we've all been out there. Yeah. Any of us are pretty supportive with that. They'll also ensure if you're out there, they'll get something to you. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, well, through the dealer network, of course, and they've yeah. got smaller remote areas that they will work with, and I yep. think they're working on that platform. Um, but yeah, look, I think they're really supportive. And we can be at the moment, because we're not a high volume dealer at the yep. moment. Yep. We can give that personal support to the customers until that dealer network grows. Fantastic. Yeah. Ineos, 
coming into Australia. It's a new thing. Uh, what can you tell us about where they might be going forward with this particular vehicle? This one's in, in, our, in our ballpark here, mate. Uh, look, if you've just seen the Goodwood Festival mm. in, uh, in the UK, yep. Ineos turned up with one of these on portal axles. Wow. There was a, uh, another vehicle that had a V8 in it as well. There was also a shorty, they called it, which was a shorter wheelbase yep. uh, quartermaster. Yep. And I think they're building something. Don't hold me on that for maybe one of the rallies <laughs> over in Europe. Yeah. But look, they want to be bespoke. They yep. want to do something different. And I think hence why you and I are here today is yep. you're in that space. Yep. Uh, you're the, the master in that space. Um, how do we now build something locally? And, and I think Ineos, whilst they haven't confirmed, and I don't want to go on record that they're coming with portal <laughs> axles, but you and I would love to get something together, put some portal axles under something and, you know, create something a little bit different. And I think Ineos is, is not, I wouldn't say a fan, but I would say they would support something like that or they'd be, they'd love to see their cars in that environment. Yeah, and it's, it's something that Australians definitely love doing. We love modifying our vehicles and something like that in this could be pretty cool. Their latest marketing campaign is built for more. There you go. And they're built for more. Well, there you have it guys, just heard from the experts. Did I or did I not buy one of these cars? Uh, like, share and subscribe and you may find out next week. Goodbye, see you later, bye. <laughs>